she denied herself. She, we have to deny herself. I mean, she, at all costs, she realized that she could be stoned to death, and she still said yes to, to God's will. Can you imagine, and I'll read that in the Apostolos of High Time, how the angel Gabriel even trembled as his assignment was to go from heaven to Mary and tell her of the salutation from, from God the Father. The archangel Gabriel was terrified of how he's going to approach this created person from the uncreated an assignment to go. There's always assignments in there. There's always an assignment. Hopefully we have ears to hear, eyes to see the assignment and to say, Lord, I want that assignment now. I have an assignment at Holy Theotokos Shrine. I love that assignment. And uh, if nothing else, I have a vigil out there. A visible witness of true Christianity. That's right. A place of healing. Uh, got to be on the radio last week. It was a never been on the radio before and I was quite uh, anxious about it. Phone call came and answered it. I was on the air. You know, you don't want to go have a hammer and hammer. You want to have your wits about you. And I anointed myself and prayed. The Lord gave me the words and the Archbishop was so wonderful in his, his interview skills to uh, bring the information out of me that he needed to have the listeners here. He knows how to exactly how to like extract information out of my mouth, out of my heart. But it was a wonderful event, and I uh, got to listen to it last Sunday going up to the shrine. We're blessed. And always it gives me a, a lift and encouragement to uh, you know, at the shrine and to uh, be there. And uh, it's a place for healing, a life giving spring. It's a replica of what was. It, that still exists in Constantinople today, back as I come. They found a spring in uh, Constantinople around the 5th century, and those who would partake of the water were healed. Isn't that amazing? But the Muslims came and destroyed it several times, but the Christians, in their perseverance, rebuilt the shrine and it's still active today. We have a replica of that shrine here in the Western Hemisphere, guarded by the Archangel Michael, our patron saint of this chapel, this monastery. We believe by faith that uh, those who come to that shrine will be healed. They will come, pray, and taste of the waters of that shrine and receive healing. Man, if they believe that, I should have a line wrapped around all of Jensen Beach. They should be standing in line saying, I want a healing, I want a healing. We read the scriptures in the gospel accounts of the healings of, that Jesus gave to mankind. And God is not a, a respecter of persons. We have that same available healing today as we had when Jesus was here on this earth. What's our limiter is our faith. Do we really believe? Our faith can give us wings or it can just make us flop on the ground like a, a bird with a broken wing and not have any, uh, I mean, it's so easy to step out of faith and step into fear because that's the opposite of faith and fear. And when you're in faith, you can, you can do all things as the scriptures tell us. With fear, you just sit there and do nothing. You're too afraid. But with faith, all things are possible, saith the Lord God. Let's see, I want to, uh, Divine Liturgy, St. John Chrysostom. Good question. Yeah. Yes, ask. Could I uh, ask you to explain? <coughs> How oh, she's ever virgin Mary. I will do that. Ever virgin. And she doesn't have Jesus. Yeah. She doesn't have the child. Right. Could you explain that to me? I will. Alright, sir. Alright. Uh, the um, thank you, Carlton. The uh, fact is that uh, we know that in, in our humanity 
that it has to man and woman have to be uh, conjoined to, to have offspring. Yeah. A sperm and an egg have to come together for the birth process to happen for the child to become a, a child and, and become birth through the canal, the birth canal. Uh, Jesus didn't have an earthly father. He had a heavenly father. And as the scriptures tell us in Luke, that the Holy Spirit came and overshadowed her and God was her husband at that point. Yeah. And because of that miracle event, there is no need for an earthly father because you get your sinful nature from your father. Okay? The Adamic sin nature, you get that sin nature from your daddy. That was all cut off and stopped because of this inter intervention by God into her uh, being pregnant by the Lord God Himself. And now it becomes a miracle child, a, a child from heaven and not from the earth. Because He is God in the flesh, no longer, now we have a perfect sacrifice available for the humanity, the salvation of mankind, who Jesus Christ now can be the only acceptable sacrifice for God to, to receive at the cross of Calvary. By her being ever virgin, meaning after that event, there were no other children through that birth canal that was closed. Out of business, closed. No longer used. Maintaining her virginity because of the fifth council proclaimed it that way, that she was ever virgin because uh, she never had a relations with, with Joseph after that event or before. Totally unique, totally uh, on fathomable with the human mind, but as an article of faith in our church, that we must believe that she was ever virgin. That's why the that's why the council uh, made sure that that got into the liturgy books. So we would always remind ourselves, ever virgin, never, ever violated by by the earth. The children. Well, what about our brothers and sisters? Well, we know that Joseph was older, and that the children. Were, that we speak of are from his side, from his first wife. Did she die? I don't know. Whatever. But uh, there were children involved from Joseph's side that were brought into the relationship. That's why James is his half-brother, if you want to call it that way. The first bishop of Jerusalem. Does that make sense to you? James uh, uh, to me, too. But I'm saying church keeping the word ever. Ah, uh, Yeah, yeah. All the, all the, what you call it, the, 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 the human, the natural world, except the ever. Well, <laughs> you, you see where I'm coming from? Yeah, well, that's a mystery of our faith. That's, that, that's the way it is. And, you know, there's a, there's a lot of things that that's the way it is. Say of God. Yeah. Like, we must have blood in the sacrifice to be acceptable. Without blood, there is no remission of sins. Who said that? God said that. Why do you use blood? He's God. He said it. That's it. It's yeah, enough. It yeah. It's over. Yeah. No discussion. You can't discuss it with God because He's already said, this is it. Uh, You're not going to get God to change on that. So, so we have to teach. When we teach, uh, uh, the, say, unbelievers, when, when, when we get in contact with the unbelievers, we put, we got to put that emphasis in, yeah. that God made it that way. Yeah, and they can't believe that unless they have faith. Yeah. I mean, they're too polluted with their their uh, teachings over here. They're not going to believe it, and it's going to take a long process, or unless it's an intervention of the Holy Spirit oh, to, to change it like that. They will never believe it. Well, I'm not saying we'll never believe it, but it's hard. It seems hard because uh -huh. if you want your poison, it's hard to get the poison out. Yeah. You know, and that's why if you get bit by a snake, you got to go get the antidote. Or you'll die. And the same thing here with the with the people who don't uh, honor the mother of God is is uh, they're, they're they've got poison in them, yeah. and and their and their belief system is is skewed. It's not they're not in spirit and truth. They're skewed. Yeah, you know, the Pentecostal Church, you know, the Protestant Church, Protestants. When you speak about Mary, there's a resistance there. So taking that one step further, uh, and the Archbishop explained this to me, which all fits in. It says in the last chapter of John that if all the things were written, it would take 
volumes of books. Well, I think that God left the Holy Spirit for us to fill in those volumes mm -hmm. on this earth. And uh, if she was the receptacle, uh, was a child bearer of Christ in the flesh, then her blood went through Christ's blood. So her blood is just as precious as his blood. Now the Orthodox and the sister church, uh, even though they may have some parts that are in error, they have the Eucharist. They respect Mary. Why do they respect Mary? Because her blood went into his blood. And he said, as he, in the Last Supper, and I go back to the central focus point of the Orthodox Church or his ministry, Jesus' ministry, when he raised up, he said, this is my body which is broken for you. Mm. He said, take this, all of you, drink of my blood. All of you, drink of my blood. That's why the Protestants have it wrong. They don't respect Mary. They don't respect her blood. They don't respect the Eucharist. That's why they have no Eucharist. They, they, That's they, why they, they don't have a holy priest. They, they really don't understand that's the, the delusion and bread that it caused them. Yeah. Well, she was the intercessor of mankind. Uh -huh. That's why she she interceded for mankind by having Jesus, and he shed his blood. That's why she had to go into the mission because her blood had to go up to heaven, just like when Mary Magdalene touched him, she could she couldn't touch him because I have no longer ascended to I have yet yet ascended to the Father uh -huh. to bring the blood to the mercy seat. That's why her blood is so precious, and that's why she went into the mission. Because her blood and his blood are the same. Protestants don't have it. They don't have an altar. They don't have the blood. That's why they disrespect her. That's why they'll never make it into heaven. Because they're going to have to go through her. Yeah, 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 yeah. I understand what you're saying. And I, I, I believe it. I, I'm I, I, I believe it. But the only thing I was saying, we got to, how are we going to convince them? We will never convince them. Only, the only person that can convince them is the Holy Spirit. Uh -huh. And, uh, because you know, they would always bring up that word, ever virgin, yeah, well, but you said ever virgin, but she had a child. You see what I'm you see what Her I'm child saying? was a, was from heaven, not from the earth. And it didn't wasn't, count. And wasn't conceived in a natural way. It wasn't no. conceived through the, 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 the flesh. way. It wasn't through the flesh, it was through the Spirit of God. Yeah. That's why she remained virgin. Origin. It yeah. didn't count. It's yeah, supernatural. Yeah. It's above yeah, all laws. Uh, it was predicted before. Uh, yes. Before she even had the baby. Isaiah seven fourteen. Isaiah. Uh, Isaiah seven fourteen. Isaiah uh, predicted that. Yes. This uh, woman would be a virgin. Yeah. And she uh, would bring forth a child, and his name would be called Emmanuel. Yeah, that's right. But yet they tried to demean her further by saying she had kids afterwards. How? I mean, this is just common sense. If you are. If the uh, as Holy Spirit starts in you, the, the Son of God, God in the flesh, you're going to have sex after that? What what a travesty, but yet there are some denominations and they demean her even more. I said that she had sex in that, and they used that passage about her brothers and sisters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's a delusion that Christ said he would send for all these people, and they buy into it. Well, they bought into a lie. Well, the Holy Christ Spirit was. has not touched their heart. They have not exactly. received the Holy Spirit to have clarity on it. Exactly. And that's why the Holy Spirit can't be in their communion. If it has it's in the it wisdom. Was. They're still caught in the wisdom of man yeah. and not the wisdom yeah, yeah, of the yeah. Lord. He take the wisdom of God clean over the, the picture. <clears throat> yeah. Because his wisdom is not as, uh, what you say, as perfect as the wisdom of God. Right. Yeah. That's right. I want to tie in here in, in, in the liturgy uh, after the... Um, Before Holy Communion and before the Lord's Prayer, there's a, there's a hymn that we sing to, um, we sing in the liturgy, and uh, it's called the uh, Axiom, and it, this is the the, uh, the the words in the hymn, and it's all about the Blessed Mother. Mm -hmm. You know, we say uh, Axios when someone is uh, ordained. Axios, it means, yeah. you know, what's oh, Axios mean? Worthy. Word. All right. Well, this word is oxion, right? Oxion. Worthy, right? Yeah. This is what the uh, the words are. I'll give them to him in the English instead of the Greek, okay? So he wouldn't have to have a misunderstanding. Unless you all know the Greek. No. Yes? <laughs> it is truly right to bless you, O Theotokos. Where did that come from? Yeah. The Third Council. Ever blessed. 
another word assigned to her. O Theotokos, ever blessed, most pure, and mother of our God, more honorable than the cherubim, and more glorious beyond compare than the seraphim, without defilement, without defilement, you gave birth to God the Word. Truly, the Theotokos, we magnify you. To God the Word. That's another mystery right there. Yeah. Well, it's the whole Christian faith is a mystery, and your, the, all the sacraments are mysteries. Uh, even your walk with Christ is a mystery because you're in a you're in a, a supernatural walk with with the, with the Creator, yeah. the uncreated. That's why the Lord hasn't given us all the answers. We have to do it by faith. We yeah. can't do it right. because we see the whole right. picture. You understand? That's what Mary did. Mary wasn't given. I mean, she may have been given part of uh, her assignment afterwards, but she wasn't given it before. She had to say yes in faith, and she did. She could oh yeah, it. oh yeah. yeah. That's why she said, uh, "Be it done unto me as you will, O Lord." Yeah. Uh, if, if you think it. <clears throat> verse 38 of Luke chapter 1 and Mary said behold the bond slave of the Lord be it done to me according to thy word yeah. and as soon as she said that the angel's job was done and he departed from her because yeah. no more dialogue required That's it. now with Mary getting that salutation Let's keep that a secret. Let's not tell anybody. No, she was bursting at the seams to tell somebody. So who'd she go to? She went to go see Elizabeth. Yeah. Because the angel already told her that Elizabeth's carrying a child. And at this time, it says in the scripture, Mary arose and went in haste to the hill country of the city of Judah and entered the house of Zacharias and greeted Elizabeth. And it came about that when Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the babe leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. And she cried out with a loud voice, Blessed among women are you, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. Yeah. That, where did Elizabeth get that? Yeah, that's right. Where she got that from? <laughs> and how has it happened to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? That's right. This is, I don't know if you ever analyze this event. For behold, when the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby leaped in my womb for joy. Even John was having the party. Yeah. <laughs> in the yeah, womb Jesus, of Elizabeth. Jesus and John was getting together. And, and he's the forerunner. Uh, yeah. And so, blessed is she who believed, for there would be a fulfillment of what had been spoken to her by the Lord. Now, this is what Mary says. Her response to Elizabeth, and it's documented. My soul exalts the Lord, and my spirit has rejoiced in God my Savior. That, 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 that makes she's not deity, right? Mary's not a de not a god. First Christian. She's a first Christian, not a god, because she said, "My Savior, I need my Savior." That's right. And um, I, I, while, uh, while, while I'm studying, uh, as you explain this, the, the wisdom comes to me is when uh, we get in contact with the uh, Protestant to tell it. No, uh, it's a mystery, and it, you, you only could uh, understand the mystery by believing the mystery. Well, first of all, you go back to the chapter of John, I think it's 14 or 15, and it says, You did not choose me, saith the Lord, I chose you. Yeah. And I chose you to bear fruit. So, first of all, you can't be a Christian unless God chose you to be one. Uh -huh. It's God's call. He goes and gets his children. He calls them into his, into his house. And then we just all we do is respond to his invitation. To invitation. And he overshadows, just like this Mary was overshadowed with the Holy Spirit. We are overshadowed with the Holy Spirit and are con con divinely convinced. Uh, when you pray, uh, like when I prayed when I was in living in Texas, I prayed and God responded to that prayer and brought me to the truth. Because who knows where I would have been today if I had not been so disgruntled with the Protestant church and, and, got, and cried out to God. Help me from this, Lord. There's too much confusion and chaos. Take me back to the first century. And he did it. Not because I demanded it. I cried out to him and responded to my prayer and set up all the parameters and all the events that brought that to be.